Hey everybody, so I'm Wesley Rudd with Rudd Manufacturing and Custom Welding. And I like to do some how-to videos for y'all whenever I get the chance, whenever I'm working on something cool. And I realize I haven't done one in a long time. I've been busy. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of stuff that I could really break down or have time to break down for y'all. But um, today I want to show you about my new winch. So I picked up this Warren M12000 winch off Facebook the other day for 500 bucks. And uh, went and looked at it, and the guy told me that um, he didn't think it ever been used. It came on the truck when he bought it. came on a half-ton truck, and I was like, golly, what are they pulling with a half-ton truck that they want a 12,000-pound winch? Anyway, so he let me hook the leads up, touch them to the battery terminals on the truck that I drove over there, and I noticed that it wouldn't spool out. It would spool in under power, but it wouldn't spool out. And uh, I thought maybe contact was froze up or something. So I took it and I jumped it off the tractor here so I could test it and um, tapped on the motor a little bit and that didn't do it. So finally I got to researching and everybody suggested that it's uh, solenoids. So I tested the solenoids and found two bad solenoids and um, fiddled and fiddled and fiddled and fiddled with it. Couldn't get it wired right. Couldn't figure out what to do with it. Um, picked up a couple solenoids from Napa. The Napa part number for these solenoids right here is um, this ST404, that's the Napa. I broke one solenoid in the process. I think it's rolled over here. Yep, it's right here. So I broke one of them. You can see I busted the terminals out of it and that made me mad because these things are about, Napa's I think are 20, some, they're all 20 something dollars, but I think Napa's were the most expensive. So then I went to O'Reilly last night and picked up uh, a couple more. Uh, this is um, O'Reilly's part number right here for the solenoids. This um, SS598 is O'Reilly part number if you're needing one of these. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and replace all of them. All four of them while I'm in here. So I went to Advance this morning because I got the last two at O'Reilly's yesterday. And their part number at Advanced Auto Parts is S5049. So... That gets you all your part numbers. So anyway, I've been messing with it and messing with it and messing with it and trying to figure out how to wire it. Thought that I had it figured out. Couldn't get it to work. Thought, okay, well this is it. And that wasn't it. So, but now, if you'll look, let me get this busted terminal out. If you'll look, it spools out under power. It spools in under power. So I'm gonna show y'all how to wire this winch up if you do have to replace solenoids. This is the original solenoid here. There is no writing, nothing on here to tell you what pole does what. If you order from Warren, I'm sure it's just gonna be a plug and play. It won't matter which way. Now notice on this one, it's got two ears on it that are opposing. On these um, other solenoids you'll buy, they'll be on corner to corner like this. They're, all they are is a basic starter solenoid. When I went in advance today, I told him I needed a, a, just a regular starter solenoid. He looked up just the old 96F150 to find a solenoid. So, it's just a standard starting solenoid. It's probably the same solenoid that's on that tractor out there, if I had to guess. Just heavy duty on the tractor. So you'll, you will have to trim one of these ears off, like you see here. Make sure you leave the one that's facing um, with the poles that way it will mount properly otherwise it's gonna be a pain in the butt so here is the four solenoids wired in now the first thing I want to tell you right now is this wire right here this white wire is the power to your switch if you forget this and you're trying to figure out why your switch isn't doing anything now check and make sure this wire is still connected because I did that once and it was really annoying this is your switch power now if you'll notice there's a, a green loom here and a green loom here. These two connect and they power one of the directions. I never did track down which direction they go. I think these two are the forwards, I think. But I'm not positive on that. So what you're going to want to do is track down. These two are green and these two are black. And then the ones in the middle are common and they're red or brown. Either one you want to call it. So you'll pull, I've already got this one wired up, I'm not going to pull it apart, but you, go ahead and number all of these terminals that you have. You can see my Sharpie mark on them now. 
Um, go ahead and number them all so you can keep up with them. Number one is your hot coming straight from the battery. Number three, number four. Um, number four is power two, I think. Hold on, let me double check. No, I'm wrong. Number three is power to your reverse side. That goes down here on this stud. I did double check. I was like, well, maybe this motor doesn't turn in reverse. So I pulled the hot power, the hot lead off, and I tapped it to here, to this terminal. You can see where it arced off a little bit, and it spun out. Do not short circuit your winch motor to make it work. Only test it if you're going to short it out. Don't do it to use the winch. It's not a good idea. So, what you can do to test these, you can pull all of these leads off. And I took some of these gator clips that I got laying around and um, put a gator clip on the, the frame on the body so it'll ground out. Put that on the silver side. Now take another one and clip it to your battery cable Touch it to the other side. You should hear it click. Now, when it clicks, take your multimeter. I've got a multimeter here. Take your multimeter and touch the two posts, the two actual terminals. Now, if you'll see here, there's a lot of resistance there because they're not touching. When you touch them, the resistance goes down to zero. Now, I'm getting a bad connection because I can't hold these two together. There we go. It goes down to zero. What you want to see, and by the way, this is your ohm setting here. That little symbol right there is ohms. I've got it turned all the way up because I was getting a lot of resistance at first. What you'll do is if your solenoid is good, your resistance will go down to zero when you touch it. It'll be reading one before you touch them together. So put your two, your two test leads one on each post, if it reads zero, you've got a good solenoid. If it reads a whole high number, you've got a bad solenoid. Like I said, I didn't want to mess with trying to figure out which one did what. I just went ahead and replaced all of them because I got tired of messing with it and I figured, you know what, it'd be a long time before I got to break back down into this thing. So, all of these are your commons. These are your common hot leads. These are your ground leads. It grounds through the base of these solenoids. Now, if you'll notice, on these particular solenoids that I'm putting in, there's a tab facing that way, a tab facing that way. On the original solenoids, they lock into these little clips on each corner. The new solenoids don't have a, a, an ear on each side like those do. So there's just two here, two here, two there, and one in the middle. Remember that because it will make it easier for you to hook it up. So, make sure on, there's a wiring diagram available um, on Google Images for the color wire to bring from here. It tells you all, it'll, it'll tell you what color this loom is on each of these. Pay attention because you're going to want them to be in the same position. So, um, put your, all your black, or put your, uh, all your reds on the inside. They should all be facing each other. Put them all on the gold post on these. That's your hot side. Then take your two green leads right here, put them on the silver post on the outside, and your two black leads opposing go on the silver post on the outside. Now on these, since these have a little bit different uh, center divider in here, you're going to want to take, they come with these spacers for different connectors. You're going to want to take one of these spacers right here and... Um, Put it underneath where your terminals go because I've got these big fat terminals on here and it's a pain in the butt. You may have to go in like I've done here and kind of clip off that plastic divider where all of these brass connectors go, where these brass lugs go. Be very careful when you do that because I have split one trying that. Luckily it was the one that broke on me anyway. So just watch that. So. That being said, I marked them one, two, three, and four. Remember, one is your hot, coming from the battery. Two and four go down to these two posts, and I'm pretty sure they control your forward. Not positive, but I'm pretty sure they do. Number three 
controls your reverse side. So, that's basically all you need to know when you get ready to test it. Just hook it up to a car battery or whatever and bump your switch. That's in. That's out. So, you can button up. Like I said, if you don't get any power to your switch, it's this wire right here, this white wire. Just put it on the same post that you put your hot lead. Um, I think that's basically all y'all are going to need to know. All I did to trim these ears off was just take a hacksaw. I put the, the good ear in my vise, the one that I wanted to keep, and just shaved down the side and um, trimmed off the extra ear. And then I took the bench grinder and kind of polished it up, make it where it wouldn't be jagged. So, that is how you wire in all these new solenoids that I've got 5,000 different brands on here. Napa, um, like I said, and your Napa part number is ST404. Your O'Reilly part number is SS598. And your advanced auto part number is S5049. Just a standard solenoid. From my understanding, what I did research online, they need to at least be rated for 100 amps. These are all rated for, I believe, 300 amps. So that means they get a combined, um, that would be 300 times four, would be a combined 1,200 amps that they put out. Because these things draw a ton of amps, the more weight you put on them. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing buttoned back up. Um, I'm about to put it, if y'all have seen some of my videos, y'all know my welding rig. I'm about to put it on my the front of my welding rig. I'm going to put it in the front bumper, make me a, a mounting bracket for it, and um, put my fair lead back on and call it good. And I'm going to have a 12,000 pound winch on my truck. My truck weighs, as it sits right now in the driveway, it's it weighs about 10 to 11,000 pounds. So I wanted at least a 12,000 pound winch to, to uh, be able to barely do it and um, I'll get a bunch of um, uh, tackle blocks and stuff, shackle blocks that I can use to uh, ease myself out if I get into a really big bind but I'll try to post videos of making the bumper um, I, I'm not going to promise anything because I tend to get caught up in stuff and forget and, and just want to go fast and don't have time to take videos but I hope this helps y'all out if y'all are trying to wire a Warren M12,000 M12, winch um, it's once you get your head in it and do some testing and some figuring out it's not that hard um, yeah that's basically it I think if I do this I'll let y'all hear what it sounds like when it does click hook that up to the positive side and no, oh, wait a minute. No, nope. I lied. Anyway, you'll hear it click. You'll know it clicks when you hear it engage. Because what that solenoid does is it breaks the power between the two points. And when you add power, it when you add power to the two poles, it connects and it makes it complete the circuit and that's how you get power back and forth so anyway i hope that helps y'all i'm fixing to see if i can pull my truck up in here it's raining right now i really hate working under a wet truck but i'm gonna see if i can pull my truck up in here now and, and get a little bit done on it and, and um hopefully at least get started making the bracket so hope this video helped y'all um be sure to like share comment subscribe don't hate in the comments please please don't just we're all adults here. We're all grown. Um, but if y'all have any questions, if y'all have anything y'all want me to do, if y'all have any videos you want me to make, anything that y'all want to see, um, let me know in the comments section. And uh, for now, I'm going to sign off. So hope y'all have a good day.